Okay, so today we're going to start on exercise 218, which is a relatively easy exercise. I think it's something that's, that's important for you to learn to do because you'll end up doing it a lot uh, as you move forward um, toward building physical 3D models. I used to ask that students do this and then laser cut it and put it together, uh, but I'm not going to do that for you guys, so you don't have to actually follow through with it, but I at least want you to have the technique for how this would work. Um, if you have a very complicated building, very complicated tower, which some of you I know do, um, you may want to simplify for this exercise so that you have something that's a little bit more realistic to be able to unroll. Um, likewise, if you run into trouble where your surfaces uh, can't unroll, then you might want to simplify. Um, but I think the technique is, is incredibly valid and incredibly worthwhile for you uh, to learn. You will finish this relatively early today, which gives you a lot of extra time to either work on your assignment 203 renderings, which are the skyscraper renderings, or to assemble your topography model, which is due on Wednesday. Right? If you want to talk about assembling your topography model or you want help doing that, today's a great day to do that. Um, we'll have extra time. Um, next class uh, on Wednesday, we're going to go back to your final again, and we'll start modeling that artist's retreat again. So make sure you bring it on your flash drive so you can keep going with it. We'll spend another day modeling it, and then we'll start to move, move for forward from there uh, on that particular project. Okay? So uh, I've gone ahead and I've, I've opened back up my uh, original building without the San Francisco backdrop because I'm going to work on this uh, as an object again, uh, separate and apart from the background rendering. Uh, and I'm, before I do anything, I'm going to save it as um, today's exercise so that I don't accidentally uh, delete it or change it in a way that wouldn't be good for the, the renderings of it. So let me go ahead and add a new folder for today. Uh, today is 218. And we'll change the name of this to 218. And I'll go ahead and click on Save. OK, so what I don't need is I don't need the outer skin, the one that was a little bit large, so we can get rid of that. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and turn off uh, the ceilings so that I have just the floors and the outer shell showing. Uh, there it is. So there's the outer shell. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a command called unroll surface. And this unroll surface, what it does is it takes a poly surface, hopefully it's a poly surface, something like this this object that's in yellow. Let me go ahead and turn off the floors for now. Something that's like this object here. Um, and it's going to fold it flat. So you guys, um, in like 130, you had to take the box, right? And you did the flat version, and then you cut it out and glued it back together. Do you remember that? Right? And maybe you did like a um, tetrad or some other shape. This is essentially doing the same thing. Rhino's doing it for you, which, which helps. The shapes can twist. You can see that on, the, on this particular building, it does twist on the back side there. Uh, and Rhino will still unroll those. If you have something like a globe or a sphere or something that has curvature in two directions, it won't be able to unroll. So let's say that I had something like this. All right, I'll try to unroll this one as well. And it's going to say, unrolling doubly curved surfaces will produce inaccurate results. Right? Same thing happens when you try to unroll, like say, a globe or a map, right? And you either get the map that they showed in high school where they kind of curved the edges and then squished the top, or you get the map that's, that fills up the page, but then Canada looks like it's like 8,000 miles long, right? Because it stretches. So um, those are the things you want to be aware of. I mean, Canada is awfully big after all, right? Um, anyway, uh, those are the things you want to be aware of. Uh, when you're doing this unrolled surface. So in this case, this object isn't a doubly curved surface, so we'll do OK. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to either go to, um, it's under surface, I think. I'm so used to typing it, I forget where it is. Bear with me for a second. Where is it? You can tell that all I ever do is type it. Unroll developable surface. There it is. It's under surface. Unroll developable surface. Uh, unroll SRF for unroll surface. 
Okay, and it's going to say select a surface to unroll, and then you see that there's a bunch of options as it's <coughs> normal with the Rhino command. The first option is for explode set to yes. I tend to leave explode to yes unless there's a lot of parts. The problem is if you don't choose to explode, it will have overlapping pieces. So it, it isn't necessarily smart enough to unfold it such that you'll be able to assemble it. Um, so I tend to leave explode to yes. You are going to want to make sure you turn labels on. You want labels on yes, because if the labels aren't on, you'll have no idea which pieces connect to which pieces. Okay? So we'll leave labels on yes. Uh, keep properties, doesn't matter, it can be no. And relative tolerance at 0 0.1 uh, or 0 0.01 is just fine. Okay? It's going to say select surface or poly surface to unroll. Again, I prefer a poly surface because they're all joined together, and I prefer to do the unroll all at the same time. And when I go ahead and hit enter, it will then put all of my pieces together flat on the ground right, with numbers that correspond to the numbers that are on my object now. So we can see the top is 9, 7, 13, and 11. So there's 9, 7, 13, and 11. That's the top. Okay. So let's look at this. I'm going to move my new unrolled surfaces over here into space for a second. And I'm going to look at it in the top view. There they are. And we'll look at it shaded so that we can kind of see it a little bit. Now I need to arrange these. So if I took, say, the top here, I type move, and I move from this point to that point, and then I type rotate from here to there, lo and behold, line 13 lines up with line 13, which is what I want. Okay. Now, if we look down here at the bottom, there's 12, so we can move 12 be down here at the bottom, and I can rotate, be right there. Okay, So that's pretty good. Those two line up nicely. Now, seam 8 and seam 8 are probably very close. If I were to move this, say, to here. But you can see that they kind of curve. Right? And so if I were to rotate this one, because of the twist in the building, Close. They either have a gap in between them, right, or they overlap. In this case, they have a gap in between them, so they're not really accurate. So it'd be hard to put that together, right, and have it have it actually make sense. Six and six, however, will work. So let me rotate from right there to right there. Now six and six line up. Okay. So 7 is up there. It'll match up with that. Let me go ahead and look for number 3. There's number 3. So we'll move number 3 to right here. And it's really just an operation of move and rotate to get there. All right, we'll take number 0. Put that. And we'll rotate. So those meet nicely. We still need number 14, so we'll move number 14 right there, and we'll rotate. Right. And so this one, this number 9, technically this point would go right in between there, but in reality it would be a lot easier for me to move this up to the top, so we'll move it right up to the top there, and we'll type rotate like that. And so now I have a piece that's assembled right? that I could cut out and glue together to make a shape, Okay, because these are the unrolled surfaces. So if I were to actually go and laser cut this, I need to do a little bit more work. So let me go ahead and add a layer, and we'll call this the laser cut layer. And as sublayers, I'll do a cut and an engrave layer. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and type either dupe edge or duplicate border, depending on which one uh, works best. In my case, I'll do duplicate edge. It's also under curve, curve from objects, duplicate edge. Right? And what that will do is it will allow me to create a line that's right on the corner all the way around 
my object. Duplicate edge. And so I'm just picking each one of the edges as I go around here. And now I'm around the object, so I'll go ahead and hit Enter. And I want to make sure that those end up being, I'm going to start with the engrave layer. So I'll right click and say change object layer so that they're on engrave. And let me go ahead and make them blue since I'm here. All right, so there they all are. Okay. Likewise, I need to make engraves where the seams are. So let me go ahead and dupe edge again, duplicate edge. And I'm going to say that edge, that edge, that edge. All right, so I have those established. They're going to go on the engrave layer as well. So let me right click and say change object layer. OK, now I have to think about if this were, and actually let me go ahead and turn off the skyscraper layer for a second so we can just see my shape. Right? If this were actually going to be glued together, it would be helpful to have some little tabs that I could then glue. So I'm going to do a few offsets. I don't need to offset both of adjacent sides. I just need to have them on one side. So let me go ahead and type offset. And as a distance, I really have no idea. So I'm just going to approximate it by drawing what looks like a reasonable length of tab. Uh, it looks like it's 187 inches. That was a guess. Okay. Uh, and then I'll go ahead and pick my object. And we'll offset that one. We'll offset that one. We will offset. That one, offset that one. So that'll glue in between these two. We'll offset this one and let's go ahead and offset that one, that one, that one does. That'll match up there. Those will glue together. That'll, that'll work. Okay. So I'm doing those offsets to prepare myself right, to be able to cut these out. Um, and so now it's going to be that's going to be a fold, and we need to do a little bit more work with the uh, cut lines. So let me take these black lines that I just created here, and we'll change these onto the engrave layer. Oops, on the cut layer. Excuse me. Change object layer, and let me go ahead and make those red so we can see them. All right, I'm going to make the cut layer active. And then I have to do a little bit more work. So let me connect that there. I'll connect this here. That one there. Now, I could use a fillet to, to make these two meet in the corner. But if I'm thinking of them as little tabs that fold together, I'd rather have the corners cut out. I would have to do that after the fact anyway. So we'll just add that to that. And so you can see how this is becoming a shape that could then be laser cut to be glued together. Now these overlap there, so I want to do a trim so that those go away. And now I also need to look at the shape. So once I get to here, I need to cut out the shape. So this and this and this and this are going to have to be cuts. And this and this and this and this are also going to have to be cuts. So I'll change the object layer. And so I'll end up with right, a shape in red and blue, red representing cuts, blue representing engrave or fold lines. right? And I'll end up with a shape that I could then cut out to make my tower. Okay. We could ultimately do a scale so that we knew that it would fit on um, an 11 by 17 laser cutter bed. I won't ask you to do that for today, but I will ask you to produce something like this that could then be glued together. Okay. I want to take this one step further. This is kind of the minimum of what you need. Uh, but if I turn back on my skyscraper layer and we go back into my perspective view, 
and I were to turn on my floors, let me go ahead and make a copy of this. I'm just getting rid of the numbers on that one. Okay. And let me go ahead and do an intersect between my object and my floors. Right? So I'm going to do intersect. And I'm also going to create a new sublayer when I do this intersect. So the objects to intersect are going to be the poly surface and all of the lines, except for this at the bottom here. And I'll end up with a bunch of lines that go around that represent the outsides of my floor. You may already have these from before, but if not, you can recreate those. Okay? I can then, let me move those outside of a sublayer. I can then turn off the floors, and I have just those curves and the poly surface left. Okay? So when I do unroll surface this time, select surface or poly surface to unroll. There's that. You see the second step here is select curves on poly surface to unroll. This will allow me to unroll the curves that are representing each of the floors with the surfaces. So I'll go ahead and select the curves, except for this one at the bottom. That one too. All right. And when I go ahead and hit enter here, right, it will, I have to select all of these and move these off. Oops. It will unroll the curves as well as the surfaces. So there, that'll work. Let me just deselect a few things. Go ahead and move. Let me look at it in the top view again. All right. So here I have a surface, but I also have a bunch of curves that were then unrolled with it. Okay. So let me go ahead and arrange this once again. But before I do, uh, let's see here. Let me select all of this and deselect the surfaces. that these are the curves themselves. So I would go ahead and make these on the engrave layer. Let me go ahead and change object layer. Now you might be able to see the blue lines a little bit better. Okay, And then I'll go ahead and continue my uh, assembly here. Go ahead and move. And notice that this was a separate unroll, so the numbers don't correspond. So they only correspond one time. Uh, or you can't count on them uh, corresponding later on. So there's that. I left behind a few pieces there. Uh, do I have two 12s? Did I? Sorry, I put this in the wrong side. That was supposed to be 13, not 12. This one is 13. Now I'm going to be really careful with the remainder of these pieces because they all have the lines with them as well. So before I move them, I'm going to go ahead and type group. And I tend to stay away from groups, but this is one opportunity where a group really helps. Um, and so on each of these pieces, I'm going to make sure that they're grouped together. Which will allow me to move them Right? And just for fun this time, I'm going to put this together in a different configuration. Because it doesn't make any difference which configuration you make it in. Uh, they'll still end up with, whoops, helps if you do this in the correct way. That goes over here.
All right, so I've put those together. I can go ahead and turn off the skyscraper layer. Uh, let me make the engraved layer current, turn that off. And you can see that now I have all the floor lines that have been established that were unrolled with it. Let's turn back on, and I'm going to dupe edges again and work my way around. I'll go ahead and hit enter, and then we can turn off that skyscraper. And so we're back to where I have all of the floors on engraved layers. I have the whole outside on engraved layers. I need to create those cut layers. So let me go ahead and offset. And we will offset there, there. think those are glued together there, those are glued together there. And let's do these. All right, so now we have to do, each of those has to go onto the red layer. So we'll change object layer to the cut layer. There it is. Now we do the cleanup. So a few extra little polylines. Let's go ahead and make the cut layer active so that these lines go directly on it. And here, I'll just drag out to the intersection of those two lines like that. And then we can go ahead and trim off the extra there. And we will trim. Perfect. A few more. All right, so now I have those. A few more cut lines need to be made, right? So let me go ahead and select this and this, that, 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 and that, and this, and this. And I'll change those to be on the cut layer as well. And so now, not only do I have the shape, right, similar to this shape, Right? But I also have each of the floors to be engraved. Right? So I'll get a little line where each of the floors of the tower. So it's a little bit more detailed, um, and it involves that one extra step of unrolling the, the curves with the surface. And so it's just something that I want you to be aware of. So minimum today, I want you to be able to do this. Right? If you want to play around with it a little bit more and create this, I'm, I'm good with that as well. Okay? You will need to, as part of your um, assignment 203, three, you will need to do an unroll of your tower into flat surfaces and show me that. Okay? If your tower ends up being too complicated and you can't unroll it, do a simplified version and do an unroll just to prove that you can do it. Okay, and turn that in with your assignment. Okay, so remember to use your extra time for either your assignment 203, right? Or you could start um, doing your um, assembly of your topo, that would be fine. Or you could start working on your uh, artist's retreat if you'd rather do that. Um, but the point is use your extra time. Okay? I will go next door to my office and grab a few sample pieces that have been cut out and glued together so you can see how they, how they come together. Okay?